Welcome back to the Googleplex and a new release of Google Play services. That means new cool stuff that you can use to build better apps. Let's go inside and check it out. Stop right there. Before you start, fix your deprecation. What do you mean, fix my deprecation? Deprecated logo. Identity matters. Gee, thanks. That's better. The new Google logo. Thank you. Proceed. All right. A big part of this release is about handling your user's identity, because we've made significant changes to the sign-in with Google API that will simplify your code and also improve the user experience. First off, the new Google branding is reflected in the button. With the new sign-in API, you can get one of these two standard buttons, all updated with a new nice-looking logo. It's even possible to create buttons with your own customized look and feel, as long as you follow the branding guidelines located here. And that's not the only improvements visible to the user. Prior to this release, when the user pressed the sign-in button, they would potentially have several steps to follow. For example, selecting an account, potentially creating a new profile, and needing to grant even the most basic of permissions a not-so-great user experience. So I'm happy to say that we have now streamlined this experience. And with the new sign-in API, the user only need to complete a single step for basic profile access, just selecting their account. And that's a really, really great user experience. But you get even more with this new API, since it also simplifies your code. Before, the sign-in process was tightly entangled with the Google API client connectivity flow, making the code to connect multiple APIs difficult. But now they have been separated, leading to much simplified code. So why is this helpful? Well, if your app adds additional scopes or connects APIs dynamically, then you don't need to write code to reconnect the Google API client. Also, the new sign-in flow has better support to manage recoverable errors, so you don't have to write as much code to deal with that. And that's great! I mean, less code means less complexity. Perhaps. Well, not necessarily. But less code is better for you. Most of the time. I think. So anyway, there you have it. The new sign-in API, making life easier for you and the experience better for your users. And there is also some updates for Fused Location Provider API. You know the technology in Google Play services that combines multiple things like GPS, cell towers, as well as Wi-Fi to identify your position as accurately as possible. When in this release, we've added methods to the Fused Location Provider API. With previous releases, it was not possible to get the batch location if you decided to turn location updates off. But that limitation is now history with the new flush location method. And we also have announcements for the App Invites API. You know the one that allows your users to invite and engage their friends with your app. In this release, we've added the Get Invitation method. This method will set up a result callback that you can use to launch your deep link activity. This dramatically simplifies your code, so check out the samples in the end. And last but not least, we have updates for the Wearable Data API, where you can now specify a sync priority for data items. So if you have something that is really, really important to sync as quickly as possible, then you should check this API out. And that's it for this release of Google Play services. But be sure to check out these resources as well. Now it's your turn to build better apps with Google Play services. So go out there and create some great apps! And don't forget to tell us all about it.